Peptides are changing the face of performance medicine. Performance medicine itself is a new science, an emerging science, and it focuses more on enhancing health and function rather than the traditional focus of medicine, which is preventing or treating or curing disease. Modern medicine has bought us this extra 20, 30 years of life. We're, we're living longer than we ever have before. But now a lot of physicians like myself are interested in how can we feel better during those years? How can we live in the most optimized body? How can we have great energy, great mental clarity? Those are the focuses that, that a lot of people are interested in now as well. So peptides are sort of in between supplements and medications. They are short chains of amino acids and they act like messengers in the body to enhance certain functions. They are being studied now for various different conditions as well as various different functions and they have proven to be really exciting in just helping people function better. Um, so I want to tell you about a few specific peptides and how I use them in my practice um, some of the risks and benefits and when to potentially consider using peptides. So some peptides are FDA approved while others are not. Most peptides are used as an injection. So it's an in injection that goes right under your skin with a very small syringe and they enhance something that's already naturally happen happening in the body. So they enhance certain cellular pathways. The Pathways that are most commonly enhanced are those for athletic performance and muscular recovery, for healing from orthopedic injuries or musculoskeletal injuries, as well as for energy, drive. There are enhancements of sleep as well. Those are the few that are not like most medications. They are not hormones, they're not steroids. Again, they just mimic something that naturally occurs in the body and enhances that particular pathway. So peptides are gaining in popularity for a variety of reasons. They tend to have fewer side effects than traditional medications and their natural presence in the body promotes more compatibility. They, they're, they can produce greater results than a lot of the medications that are used to treat a specific disease or condition. There doesn't need to be a specific diagnosis to use a peptide. They are sort of enhancements of what's already going on in the body. Peptides are what's called pleiotropic, which means that rather than just working on one pathway or targeting one sim symptom, they can target many things at once, which is a pro and a con. The, the pro is that you can target more than one thing, so you can have more energy and also have better sleep. The con is that sometimes inadvertently we're targeting things that we don't intend to with certain peptides. We have to be extra careful when it comes to those things. There's growing research support for a lot of applications of, of peptides and peptides are mostly injectable, but some are used orally and some are used as nasal sprays. So I wanna tell you about three peptides that I use in my clinical practice that have had wonderful results and uh, that a lot of people are, are gaining benefits from. Before we go into that, I, I also want to say that peptides are meant to be used for a short time to, to enhance certain pathways. It's not something you stay on long term, but doing a, a peptide protocol perhaps once or twice a year can enhance certain functions in the body. So probably the most popular peptide is something called Samorolin. This is FDA approved and it is a peptide that enhances your body's natural production of growth hormone. Growth hormone is one hormone that cannot be replaced. There's too many side effects if um, a patient gets growth hormone that is pharmaceutically produced, but by enhancing your body's own production of growth hormone, we often see enhanced energy, 
better recovery from exercise, as well as better sleep. So growth hormone goes down as we age, just like every other hormone, and it is highly involved in sleep. So most of our growth hormone is secreted during the night, particularly between the hours of 10 and 2 a.m. So those early hours of sleep are really important. And using this peptide, again, helps one recover from exercise. It also changes the body composition a little bit. It doesn't cause one to lose weight, but it turns more fat into muscle. So people feel like they are leaner and they're able to put on muscle a little bit easier. This is mostly a, a safe peptide. The people who cannot take this are people with cancer or people with a strong family history of cancer or cancer in remission. Unfortunately, if you have more growth hormone, that can cause anything in the body to grow. And if you have something like a tumor, you have to be extra careful. The next peptide that is very popular is something called BPC-157. This is not FDA approved, but there is a lot of experimental use um, among people seeking improved performance in, in various areas. BPC is uh, short for body protection compound. It is a peptide that is secreted in your stomach usually, and BPC is a synthetic version of, of that peptide. And BPC works by accelerating tissue regeneration and healing. So it's been really great with tendon injuries that have trouble healing, as well as muscular injuries, musculoskeletal issues where um, healing is slow. So tissue regeneration mostly happens by forming new blood vessels to injure tissue. So again, you inject BPC right under your skin, in uh, usually in the belly, and it, the molecule has the ability to find injured tissue and travel there. And it really enhances the healing of tendons, ligaments, and muscles. It also has some benefits for gut health and digestion. So we found that a lot of people with reflux that does not respond to traditional measures really get better with BPC. It also has anti-inflammatory properties as well as support for joint health. And there's some mood lifting properties as well. People certainly just feel better when they take BPC. Uh, again, this one is still experimental, so we have to be extra careful with, with who takes this. Again, people with a cancer history are, are mainly excluded from being able to take this because if you're growing new blood vessels, new vasculature, you don't want to do that with a tumor or a cancer history. So, so again, this is best for um, healthy people who are probably under the age of 65. And then the last peptide that's very interesting is something called Selenc. And this was developed in Russia. And this is one that is taken intranasally like a spray, like something like Flonase. So it was developed in Russia for anxiety and it really improves cognitive function and focus while calming down the nervous system. So it's great for mood stabilization, focus, and mental clarity. It, it, it can be used with anti-anxiety medications, but it does not sedate a person and it's not, um, it doesn't cause dependence. So this one is not FDA approved quite yet, but again, um, there's a lot of use and it is, promising. We're, we're not seeing many risks with this. We're not seeing any populations that are having any um, adverse effects. And it can also enhance one's immune response. So, so for people who have autoimmunity, sometimes we want to avoid Selenc. So um, peptides are a very interesting new emerging therapy that is being used by people who want to optimize their performance, by um, highly successful people who want to thrive with their energy, with their sleep, with athleticism. I talked about three peptides here. There are many more for, for different uses. Um, there are some for sexual function, for mitochondrial health and energy. 
there's there's many different applications and it's all very interesting and we'll continue to watch the research as it comes out.